Today I'll be showing off my modification project on a Star Trek Next Generation Playmates hand phaser, circa 1994. I picked up one of these in the 90s when I was a kid, an, an older kid, um, and thought it was the greatest thing. I was a big fan and I really wanted it to do more than it does. It, uh, it's battery operated, makes a sound, uh, the tip would light up red and, you know, being an older kid, that's not all that cool. It was more of a collectible. Um, and at the time, lasers weren't ubiquitous. They had a couple red laser pointers out there, but they were so weak and it just really uh, wasn't worth doing at the time. But now, I've added a 250 milliwatt red cutting laser, which um, can pop balloons, burn some wood, plastic, and paper. So here's what I did. There wasn't much electronically that needed to be modified in this case. All I really did was remove the light bulb from the circuit and replace it with this quarter watt laser. So that's a quarter watt red laser right there, which happens to just fit into the old light bulb mount with just a little bit of hollowing out for flushing. The reason I had to do that is the way the light bulb was fixed, there are two lips that held it together, held it in place. This first one here is rounded and was the perfect size and match for our laser's diameter, for the shell of the laser. Um, but the one on the inside was slightly larger. So what I had to do to make the barrel of the laser fit is just hollow out part of that to make all of that nice and smooth to accommodate the laser. And once that was done, everything fit together quite nicely. Okay, so it's not really that simple. We have to consider power. Now the two AA batteries that were originally used to power the phaser as a toy only produce three volts between the two of them. They're 1.5 volts each, and they are wired in series, which means you're taking the 1.5 volts of one and adding it to the 1.5 volts of the second for a total of three volts. Now, that voltage isn't enough to power the laser. Although it did work, and I did get some light out of the laser, this 250 milliwatt laser is rated for 3.5 to 5 volts. So basically, I need this to hit about 4 volts before it's going to do anything useful. So I had to eliminate the AA batteries entirely. Now, remember that I said the AA batteries, just like in a flashlight, are wired in series, like stacking one on top of another to multiply their power. And a lot of devices are um, wired that way. We need to change that to a parallel wiring um, for the laser because what I needed to do was upgrade to the 14500 3.7 volt lithium battery. So one of these green batteries has more voltage than two of the AA batteries. And that's why you see that I only actually have one in the phaser right now, because the truth is I'm afraid that if I put both of them in, I'm going to blow out the circuitry. And the reason for that is, although I have them wired in uh, parallel, which means I'm not doubling the 3.7 volts, I'm actually going to be doubling the current, the amperage. And as a result, I might fry the phaser's internal workings, and I'm not yet ready to take that risk until I'm really sure. So I'm going to revisit this project later, probably put in even a more powerful laser. But for now, I just don't want to fry it. It works really well. Um, once I'm a little more confident with the circuitry, maybe I'll put that second battery in. But just keep in mind, you're going to have to rewire these batteries into uh, a parallel circuit whether or not you use both of the new batteries. Even if you're going to use one battery, you do have to rewire the terminals inside the case to make this work. Otherwise, uh, power won't go to uh, through the circuit because the second battery is missing. So um, in the next slide, I'm going to point out a few other details while the phaser is open before I put it back together. Um, you can see the twist focus lens housing uh, up front near the black emitter. And that um, serrated top there, that is a twist, sort of a nozzle, that allows you to tune this laser. This is a tunable or focusable 250-milliwatt um, laser. I got it on Amazon. 
Um, it's a complete uh, laser module, meaning the diode is, is built in and the driver is built in. Um, this one can be tuned by turning that knob. Now, I wanted initially to make it so that I could access that knob while I was using the phaser, but there's really not any way to do that because it really needs to be contained inside the, the phaser shell. Um, there is going to be, um, once this is put together, there's a plate that goes right over that area, and that plate holds, not only holds the phaser together, keeps the laser in place, but it also keeps that front black uh, emitter in place. So it's necessary that we cover that. It's focused between 6 and 10 feet, and as you saw in the videos, that's exactly where we want to be to blow up balloons, light things on fire. Um, that works well enough, but I could take it apart and just turn that knob and focus it for different um, for different lengths. Uh, the wiring is pretty simple. You're just taking the light bulb wiring out and replacing the light bulb wiring with the laser's wiring, which is just a positive and negative cable. The blue goes right where you took the light bulb's uh, negative wire off the PCB. So where you remove that from the circuit board is where you're going to put that blue wire. That is a negative terminal on a circuit board. And we're going to take the orange wire and put that right to the battery positive. Remember, I rewired that battery in, in parallel. And so I'm going right from the positive terminal of that battery to the laser. Okay, so the switch is actually blocking current at the negative wire. And uh, when you push the button, it completes the circuit off of that blue wire. Now, the demo switch, which you can see near the arrow up on the right, was originally there to turn the phaser off while it was in its box on the toy store shelf. So when you push the button on the phaser, you would hear it make a sound, but it would not light up because with the way the box was designed, you couldn't see the tip of the phaser anyway, and they didn't want kids wearing out the demo batteries too quickly. So that switch actually disabled the light bulb. Now, in theory, you could use that switch as a backup to disable the laser. So if you flick that switch, you would still get your sound, but you would be disabling the laser. Because I have kids in the house, I thought, you know, maybe it's a good idea to just have that hidden in there that I could turn the laser off. And you certainly could do that. Okay, so that's daylight you see coming through the window in a darkened room. So that is my Star Trek The Next Generation phaser laser project. If you'd like to see more projects like this, please subscribe. In the works is a Ghostbusters proton pack that shoots a 2-watt blue laser and is absolutely spectacular. I also have a laser tag done right project, which I'm going to use a 500 milliwatt orange red cutting laser in. And I'm also working on Roby Jr. Radio Shack Robot Upgrade to a Smart Robot, which is an ongoing project on this channel. So please check those out. And if there's something you'd like to see us do, let me know.